God first gives you the power to become a son. This is so critical. (laughs) He gives you the power to become a son. What is that? He defeated hell in the grave. Hallelujah. When we call on the name, there's already power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, remember, whenever creation was happening, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep. He was hovering, just hovering. Well, why was the Holy Spirit not manifesting? Because he was waiting on a word. And when God said, let it be, it was, and Holy Spirit manifested. The Holy Spirit is already here and now, and he is hovering, and he is waiting for somebody to pledge their allegiance to the cross and say, Jesus is Lord. And then he will manifest you as a son of God. Hallelujah. He gives you the power. It's here. It's now. It was paid for 2,000 years ago. If you're waiting on God, you're backing up. Just bow your knee and say, Jesus is Lord. No longer my life, Lord. I'm dead, and I'm alive in you. I'm going to walk with you. I have repented, not going back into every sin. No, I've turned to God. I'm walking with God, true repentance. And the same faith that brought me in is the same faith that keeps me walking in him. Hallelujah. He gives us power to become sons. I want to touch on this real fast. We talked about this last time. We don't need any more yo-yo Christians we've got Christians thinking that the anointing is something that comes and goes. There are bad teachings that say, increase the anointing. Well, as we studied last time, some of you weren't here, get the teaching. We went through all the scriptures and saw the word anointing never meant power. The word anointing never was translated power. It was always to be consecrated or separated to the work of God, to the office of God. And I'm here to tell you, church, that whenever you made Jesus Lord, he positioned you, he anointed you, he seated you, hallelujah, into the highest position that you can be positioned in actually at the, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and you are seated in him at the right hand of the Father in the seat of all power and majesty on high above every principality and every power that can be named. You getting this? That is the anointing. And whenever he gave you the power to become one with Jesus, we're one spirit with him, there is no separation. You you are the only one that can deposition yourself. Yeah, yeah, the Bible does say some have departed from the faith. Just because he will never leave us does not mean you will never leave him. Let me tell you something, church. We, can't, we don't have time to play with sin. You know why? Sin brings separation from God. But we're one with him, pastor. Yeah, I got that. But if you play with the devil long enough, he will convince you you are not a son. You are not worthy. You will fall away from God. And that union will be broken, not by God's will, but by you fading out of that union. Remember, the same faith that brought me in the union is the same faith that keeps me in the union. There is a reason, church, why the Bible says these practicing this lifestyle of sin will not inherit the kingdom of God. The church got to quit playing. It's playing with fire. It's going to get burned. I watched a documentary from uh, Sid Roth. A man had a death experience, and he went to hell, and it, it, it shook me to my core. And you'll have a message coming to you soon brought by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the Holy Spirit, because he said this. He said, the, the most dominant sin in hell right now is people who, quote, unquote, thought they were Christians. You better hold on to this. Thought they were c- Christians, and they believed the lie that, hey, Because Jesus paid for past, present, future sins, that it doesn't matter how I live. The Bible says the one, the master you serve is the one you obey. Sin unto death, sin still brings death, church. Or righteousness unto God. We got to get this. We got to quit playing with this thing. What does light have to do with darkness? We have no, we have no um, affiliation with darkness. No, no. We've got to be set apart. We, you were set apart. You were anointed. You were taken from the world system, the kingdom of darkness, the authority of darkness, the Bible says, Colossians 1, 3, 13, and you were translated to the kingdom of light and his dear son. Say, I've been positioned. Say, I've been anointed. And the anointing don't come and go. So now when you go out as a son of God, the enemy can't come in 
and say, well, you ain't prayed enough, so you're not quite anointed, or this or that. <clears throat> no, that doesn't even make sense in context. It's a wrong preaching, wrong time, getting wrong results. And if this was heavy, go back. It was the anointing is not a feeling. Get that teaching. You need to get that teaching so down in you. Go through the scriptures so when man comes to lie to you, you got chapter and verse to stand on. You can't even translate the word anointing as, uh, as power. It doesn't even translate that way. We've been consecrated. We've been separated. We've been positioned into the office of God. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> the, reason, the reason the enemy has been successful at checking you, which we're really going to get to, the door of your authority and your anointing is this. Go to Romans 6 and 3. We got to get this. It says, know ye not that as so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. Everybody say death. death. The old man, whoever you were, whatever your name was, that guy's dead. Listen to me closely. You better get this. God is not try trying to make the first Adam better. He makes the first Adam dead. You're trying to get better to beat sin. You can't beat sin. You need Jesus. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need him. Hallelujah. And you become dead to sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. You become separated from this world's systems. You getting this? People trying to beat sin. You don't beat sin. You die. You reckon yourself dead to it. Give me the next verse. Verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should no longer serve sin. But I want you to get something. Our old man was crucified with him. The reason that you feel anointed one day and not is because you go back into the old man. You're right. The old man is not anointed. He's fallen. That's why you feel fallen. Because you are looking into your past. God doesn't look at your past. He is the Bible says he tosses your sin in the sea of forgetfulness, not because he's forgetful. He literally chooses to remember your sin no more because he wants you to remember your sin no more because he knows the enemy is attacking you this way and he's trying to destroy, he's trying to destroy in your mind who you are. He's trying to destroy the power you have because ain't nobody can take it from you. You have to surrender it. The enemy can't stop you. He can only suggest to you, you be stopped. Is that, is that making sense? So the key here is that the first Adam doesn't get better. And we got too many first Adams that are trying to get better. They are not saved. You have to die. I'm sorry, we don't say the greasy grace message in here. Hey, just throw up your hand if you just want to. You, you know, if I just say Jesus' name, there's a hell to avoid and a heaven to gain. Yeah, I'll do that. I don't have to change the way I live. This is a false doctrine sending people to hell, man. And this church will not bow its knee to Balaam. We will not bow to the world system or the American model of church based on, because look, I'm the, I wasn't a pastor who was raised by a pastor and a pastor. I was a businessman called by God for a mission, and I ain't bowing my knee. But that's not popular. I ain't trying to be popular. I'm trying to be punctual. I'm trying to... to, to, to to make things happen in your life. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get you to see this, to do this. And Jesus only needed 12. I don't need 500. I just need 10, 12. Hallelujah. Because once you start to understand this and know this and you start walking like this, hallelujah, you won't have to tell them about your Jesus. They'll want to know about your Jesus. We, it, the days of telling your neighbor how good God is is over. It was, it was never how Jesus did it. He demonstrated the power and the love of God because they're all in one. Amen? You seeing this? All right. Go to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. I'm going to let you get there in your Bible. Word to everyone. If you're going to preach, don't drink a chocolate smoothie before you do. I, I'm, I'm trying to get that chocolate smoothie out of the way. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So if you see me grabbing more water than normal, everybody rebuke that chocolate smoothie. And Jesus came and he spake unto them saying, all power, underline all power. Underline it. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, all power. 
Let's go. Do we have verse 19 and 20 in the King James? Give me verse 19. We'll go ahead and read 19 and 20. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. Next verse. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. Um, Look at this. Now go back to 18. I want you to see this. Immediately after he said, all power and authority is given unto me, he was commissioning the church right here because after he said, all power and authority is given unto me, what he was telling them, we're one here. That power and authority that's given to me is given unto you because you're in me. It's all been given unto me. You got to see this. It's all been given unto me. And then he said, go. And the reason he said go is because we got a good father who knew he'd given us everything we need to do what he preordained us to do from the foundation of the world. You got that? Now go to the ESV, because this word, it's translated power here, but it's not translated correctly. The ESV gets it right. And the ESV says that, and Jesus came and said unto them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Everybody say authority. Authority. That word is exousia. That word exousia means authority. It means the right to speak or the right to speak boldly. You get that. The right to speak or the right to speak boldly. Notice this. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. We got to debunk something real fast. We're going to come back to this scripture. Go to, uh, go to Luke 19.17. It's changing the order, but the Holy Spirit's in control. Is that okay? They're having to do some rearranging over there. And he said unto them, well, thou good servant, be, uh, be thou has been faithful in very little, have thou authority over 10 cities. Well, what's it saying? If you've been faithful over five cities, then, then he'll give you authority over 10 cities. You see in this? The church has taken this as a now. It's not a now. Back up to my other verse. Back up to verse uh, It was verse, uh, verse 17. There you go. No, no, no. It wasn't 17. 15. My bad. We, we, the Holy Spirit changed it up on me. I'm trying to keep up with him. And it came to pass that when he was returned, I don't have time to go through the whole parable. When he was returned, he, this was about the talents. He gives out talents. Well, Jesus has went back to the Father. Amen. He's, we are going in Christ's stead in his absence. We are the body on the earth today. Need to get that. But he has went back to the Father, but he's returning. And when he's returning, he's going to say, is there faith on the earth? He's going to be looking for the talents and the ability of God that he's given you. Amen. But it's when he returns. The church is taking this scripture, which we just read in verse 17, says, well, see, I hadn't been faithful over little, so he hadn't given me more authority. You're in the wrong doctrine, man. You're thinking wrong. You got to debunk this thing in your head. That's when he comes back. He's going to be given more. Whatever you do with what he gave you today, when he comes back to rule and reign, hallelujah, then you'll be delegated more if you did something with it. If you sat on the couch and just say Twinkies and bonbons, you'll have a place in heaven, but doggone it, what a miserable eternity. You don't even get more cities. What I'm saying here, church, is that we believed a, a hoax that, well, you know, because I haven't, I haven't done enough with the authority he's given me, that he hasn't given me more. And because I went to my sister, I'm trying not to outmove the camera guy here, because I went to my brother and I went to lay hands on him, I didn't get the job done because I didn't have enough authority because uh, of this, of that, right? Because, you know, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. No, it, it doesn't work that way, church. Say, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. All authority, we're going to get this, in heaven and earth. Well, let's go ahead. Can I get you two to come up real fast? This is, um, how many of you know Fred Price, the faith dome? You'll hear this doctrine through there, but you better not believe it. He says, I'm Jesus. Everybody say, hey, hey. So Jesus, you become a Christian. You get some of my authority, and you get some of my authority. Can I get another Christian up here? Come on, come on. Get up here fast. Come up here. Oh, and you said Jesus is Lord, so you got some of my authority. Uh, come on, brother. Come on, one more. Okay, you said Jesus is Lord. I hope the camera's working on this, and you got some authority. And so let's say this makes up 100% of Jesus. 
Well, Fred Price says, see, that's why the church needs to come all together so we can have 100% of his authority. No, church. Go back to, to uh, Matthew 28, 18. Go back to Matthew 28, 18. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. It will always be 100% of Jesus' authority. It's not that he gives you a percentage, you a percentage, you a percentage, and when you come back together, it's 100%. No, we, we abide in him, and we go in his authority. Because you're going in you, what you think is your delegated authority, you're getting in the way. The old man, thoughts of the past, and you're thinking you don't have enough. But it's not your authority, it's his authority. You better get this. You will go out bold and tenacious if you get this. Because it's like this. Give me that back. Give me that back. This is all Jesus' authority. Now put your hands on me. Put your hands on me. They're all in Jesus. And they have my delegated authority. They've been commissioned by me. I give them authority. It's my authority. It's Jesus' authority. And as they go, they have my full authority as they go. You see in this. Not part of it. They're one with me. I am not one separated from Christ. I'm one spirit with him. Hallelujah. There's no distance in the spirit. We're one with him. Jesus never told you identify with your name, Bobby, Susie, Annie, or whatever you are. He said, no, the old man's dead. Only identify with who you are. And if you start to identify with who you are in Christ, hallelujah, and you know it's his authority, and it's not some piece of paper he gave you, and you don't have enough, then you will start laying hands and getting results because now you are thinking with the mind of Christ. Because he's given you all authority because you're in him. You have all his authority. Give him a hand. Have him sit down. Amen. All authority. All authority. The policeman, the policeman that pulls you over, church, when he pulls you over, when he pulls you over to give you a ticket, he's not pulling you over with his authority. Uh -uh. He doesn't personally have the authority. You don't personally have the authority. You have Jesus' authority. The, um, the city or the government that has uh, commissioned the police officer. Here it is, church. The police officer was given a commission, pre-permission to stop you for breaking the law. Get this. Let this sink in. The officer was commissioned Hallelujah. He was given pre-permission to enforce the laws of that government or that state. Are you seeing this? Jesus has given you or commissioned you, and he has given you all his authority. It's his authority. You go in Christ's stead in his authority. Isn't it good that I go in his authority and not my own? I'm in his authority. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing missing there. Ain't nothing lacking there. It's his authority, hallelujah. Big difference when I'm going and thinking, well, he gave me some authority and he's gonna give me some or he's gonna let this work if, I, if I've done enough or if I've had, no. He, he has entrusted you. He is backing you with the government of heaven, that badge, that police officer. When you go to the courts, when you go to the court system and you sit down and they've got, it's called the state versus the person that got the ticket, right? The government of heaven, Hallelujah is backing up the badge or the name of Jesus, which you are, which you carry, hallelujah, to enforce, enforce what is done in heaven. I don't want you to miss this. Did I go over your head? Did it shoot over your head? The government of heaven. Let me give you another scripture to help you with this. Look at Philippians 2, 9. Everybody say, this is good. It says, wherefore God has hath, hath, everybody say hath. It's already done. Exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Look at the next verse. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. That covered it all, folks. Just as a police officer has the badge and it had like the, the state of Louisiana. We got state police. The government of Louisiana is already giving them pre-permission to enforce the laws of that government. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus is on your badge. That's who you are. Hallelujah. You are one with that name. You're not separated from Jesus. You are one spirited him. That is the eternal you. Hallelujah. And the government of heaven is backing you up with all the, the governments of heaven, the angels. Hallelujah. Backing you up to make earth look like heaven. Why? Because as he was given the name above every name, you have the name above every name that what? At that badge, 
at who you are. His authority. Hallelujah. His authority is how you stop the devils. People say, well, I don't know if I want to cast that demon out because it might get on me. Are you kidding me? It ain't your authority. It's his authority. It don't have the right, folks. We got a false doctrine in the church. And I'll get there, Holy Spirit. I'll get there. I wanted to say it, but he said, wait. Wait on me. All right. Let's look at Luke. I want you to look at Luke 10, verse 1. And we're going we're gonna to hit a lot of scriptures here, so I hope you have your, your sword or read along with me. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face to every city and placed them uh, with her. Uh, he himself would come. So Jesus said, hey, I'm sending you out two by two to go to places where I'm going to go. All right? Keep reading. Next verse. Verse 2, therefore he said unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye to the Lord of the harvest that, uh, that he would send out laborers into his harvest. We'll just hit the next verse. Verse 3, he said, go your ways. Behold, I sent you forth uh, lambs among wolves. Look at verse 4. Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes uh, and salute no man by the way. Verse 5, and into Whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be unto this house, verse 6, and if, the, if, if, it, if, and if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall uh, rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again, verse 7. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labor is worthy of his hire. I want to make a point here. Anybody ever call you and says, Hey, I want to come preach at your meeting. I just need, I need money before I come. That's a hireling, folks. Jesus never said, go beg for money. No, I trust God. I don't beg for money. I don't need to beg for money. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. If I go preach somewhere and he tells me to go, I'm just going to go. I'm not going to worry about how the money gets there. It's going to just show up. Hallelujah. You got that? So he said, we're not hirelings. We don't go places and say, hey, give me money. I'll stay at your house and I'll minister to you. We don't do that. We just show up and we're going to know that they're going to take care of us. Amen? Because one of God's kids is worth his hire. Hallelujah. We're all supposed to be preaching the gospel everywhere we go. This is house to house. Um, verse, verse eight, and whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. Verse nine, all that to get here. Look at this. And heal the sick that they're therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God has come unto you. Look at me, church. The doctrine of I got to preach 30 scriptures before I can lay hands on you or you're not going to get healed. This totally debunks that. He said, go heal them. Then tell them the kingdom's come nigh to you. They hadn't preached a lick yet. We don't have to preach 30 scriptures. Now, let me say this. If the person's willing, I will gladly pump that life-giving word into them before hands are laid because I'm stirring them up and it's stirring me up. That's all that's happening. You see that? But this debunks, well, you got to preach 30 scriptures or they won't get it. No, that's bull, and we've debunked that. We've seen, we've just, that outreach we did, 12, 13 people totally healed. Nobody preached to them. We just went in and laid hands. We've proven this in this ministry. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. But into verse 10, but into whatsoever city you enter, they receive you not, go your way unto them in the streets the same way and say. Basically, these next couple of verses, he's saying, hey, when you've went in there, you've demonstrated the power. He said they got no excuse. It's going to be worse for them than like Sodom and Gomorrah, basically. You, you getting this? We're going to get where I'm going. Go to verse, go to verse 17. And it says, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. What did Jesus do? He gave them temporary authority. Because back in the old covenant, you, you couldn't, it couldn't stay. It came upon you. For the mission, he anointed 70. Some people say 72, but hey, look, we're not going to dispute that. But they still went out two by two. Hallelujah. And he gave them a temporary deal for them to go out for this mission. You seeing that? How do you know that? Because later on in the gospel, you'll see the, the, the guy brings his boy to him, and he says, hey, your servants couldn't heal the boy. Can you do something? Why? He, gave, he anointed them for that mission. Go into these cities where I'm going, right? But it was a temporary thing. With you, it ain't temporary. Amen? Not temporary with you. All right? <clears throat> Verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So before that, they said, hey, the devils are subject unto your name. I beheld Satan uh, as lightning fall from heaven. Now, here we go. Verse 19. Behold, 
I give unto you, that word was translated in the King James power, that word's authority, exousia. He said, I have given unto you exousia, authority, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Now, the word used for the power of the enemy is really supposed to be translated ability. I want you to get this. So we have authority, but the enemy does have ability. I'm going somewhere with this. And the enemy has ability. So I give you all authority. Remember, heaven's backing us up. We have every right. We got the government of heaven backing us up using the government of heaven, Jesus' authority, not our own. It's his. We're in him, hallelujah. So it can't fall back on me getting into the fallen man thoughts and deactivating what should be happening, hallelujah, to uh, over all the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So here it is. Satan, Satan doesn't have authority. The church has said that. Well, Adam gave him authority. No, no, no. Put John 10, 10 on the screen. You're going to see this. John 10, 10. The thief. What did Jesus call him? Everybody say thief. This is not a trick question. The thief come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's Satan. That ain't God. We got a whole bunch of Christians accusing God of doing these things, but it ain't God. Amen? He calls him a thief. If, if the enemy had authority, he would not be a thief because he had permission. He's a thief. Whatever's happening is illegal. And the government of God is backing you up with Jesus' authority. You have his authority to stop it. Not your old man. Quit identifying with the old man. Get out of that. Die. Don't try to get better. Get dead. Get in him. Hallelujah. And walk as who you are. Is this, is this heavy? Is it going over your head? I need you to get this. He's a thief because what he's doing or what he's done is illegal. He wouldn't be called a thief if he had the authority. I know there's teachings. Well, I gave the devil the authority. Bad teaching. Jesus, go back to Matthew 28, 18. You got to get this. Jesus will always 100%, come on, Matthew 28, 18, have 100% of authority. Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. You operate in his authority and you don't have the right to give it away. It's his I don't care what you think. No, you let the thief steal from you because he lied to you. If Jesus has 100% of authority, hallelujah, come on, somebody, you don't have the permission to give the devil any authority. That's why it's all his. He ain't doing it like he did it the first time where it got messed up. Uh-uh. He's got all authority, hallelujah, and you are in him operating in his authority. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. So it's not falling on me. It's all about him. It ain't about me. It's about what he did for me, not what I do. Amen. We should do good because he's already said every good thing about us for predestined works to do amazing, marvelous things, and it ain't in the strip clubs, and it ain't pimping, and it ain't doing all that other nonsense. I hope you're getting this. He's a thief. Jesus never gave Satan authority, and he never gave you the permission to give away his authority. You need to get that out your head. Jesus has all authority, 100%, all time. You just need to abide in the shadow of the Most High. We need to, we need to move and have our being in him, hallelujah, because that's where the authority is. We're one with him, hallelujah. He's not looking at your past. What are you doing? You're a son, hallelujah. You, you, he, all that, that, that believed on him, he gave the power to become sons. You've been anointed, hallelujah. And with that anointing, he has commissioned you and heaven is backing you through that unity that we have in Christ. God doesn't look at us as separate beings. He looks at us as one new species. We keep, we keep separating ourselves from, from Christ. And some people say, oh, you can't say, I'm just saying what the scripture says. You can do whatever you want. You can bend it, do it, whatever you got to do to make you feel better about how you're falling short and all these things. No, he said be perfect. I can be perfect. I mess up, no problem. I, I blow out a tire. I repent, keep going. I don't grovel for three days. The only reason is why you would grovel is because you don't understand. You need him. I mean, you grovel because you're looking at all your good deeds, and what you're trying to do is go put some better marks on the board so that you can actually come back and say, I'm worthy. Wrong. No, you better just say, hey, poof. No, I messed up, Lord. I'm one with you. I, I, I repent. I'm, I'm walking with you, and you should do it immediately. You don't stay down there. Righteous man falls seven times. Get back up. Eight, nine, ten. Now, as you get further along, you shouldn't be falling all the time. 
Amen. You should be walking better. You know, my little girl, she started walking about three months ago. She's walking a lot better now. You know, we should start walking better. Amen. Amen. But we got the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, working within us, that grace of God working within us to manifest the sons of God. It's in you. Amen. He's blessed you. He said every good thing he could say about you. Hallelujah. But remember this. The enemy doesn't have authority. You should write this down. He has ability. But ability ain't authority, folks. And you can't give him authority because Jesus has all authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that Jesus, you have all authority and that we can't go giving it away. You can't give it away. Jesus has it all. We operate in his authority. Just like that police officer, you got to get this. The commissioning, he doesn't pull you over by his power or his authority. He pulls you over by the pre-permission given to the state police, pull you over by the pre-permission of the state, the government of Louisiana, to enforce the law that's already written, hallelujah, but it's not his. He operates in the state of, uh, the, or that government of Louisiana's authority. You got that. It's the same thing in the kingdom of God. It's not, it's not your personal authority that he's delegated that you can get more of, you can get less of. No, no, no. It's 100%. Jesus at any time is backing you up with all the angels, with heaven itself, so that you will go forth in that commissioning, in that name above every name, which every knee should bow, to make those knees bow. And knees will bow willfully or they will bow forcefully one day anyway. But every knee is going to bow. And you have the power or the authority, amen, of Jesus, his authority to make earth look like heaven. You see in this church? <clears throat> so I want to give you a little format here so we put the anointing and the authority kind of together. So, you know, Holy Spirit comes upon, hallelujah. I, I, I make Jesus Lord, you know. I'm positioned, I'm anointed. With that anointing comes a commissioning, right, where he gives you the authority of heaven. He gives you the authority of his name. And then Acts 1 and 8, he gives you the power. He makes you, he gives you power to become a son. He gives you the commission to enforce sonship, but power to manifest as sons of God, Acts 1 and 8. Write that down. You need to get that. A lot of people don't understand all that. The power to manifest as a son of God, Acts 1 and 8. You got to get that. So I've been born again. He gave me as many as believed on him. We became sons of God. You were seated. When you became a son, you were seated in the son. Hallelujah. You've been anointed. That's the anointing. Amen. The commissioning comes with that, that you have the commissioning of heaven. You have the authority of heaven. And then the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To manifest as who you are. To walk as a son. Say amen. Amen. Okay, I want to show you uh, Matthew 18, 18 in the Amplified. Matthew 18, 18 says, you ready for this? I don't always use the Amplified, but I believe it gets it right here. Truly, I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful on the earth must be what is already forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit and declare to be proper and lawful on the earth must be what is already permitted in heaven. Jesus, write this down. You need to write this down. Heavy statement. Jesus got out of the binding business 2,000 years ago. When Jesus walked the earth, that authority was basically it just held in him. But now as we've come into him and we're parts of his body, we're still one. Don't start separating. But as we're parts of that body, we have all the authority of Jesus as parts of that body. Amen. If he touched you with his right hand, there was still all authority. If he touched you with his left hand, or if he just spat on his hand and wiped your eye, whatever, whatever came out of him had full authority. You got to get that. And you're all parts of one body, okay? But what was he doing? Whatever what was already unlawful in heaven, Jesus was using the authority, his authority, to make earth look like heaven. Sickness was illegal in heaven. All these poverty is illegal in heaven. Are you seeing this, church? And And we're waiting on God to give us another fist bump to say, hey, you're ready or all this stuff. And God does things. When God does something, he does it all the way through. The deficiency is not of God. It's of you knowing who you are as a son of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hope you got that last statement. Came right out of the throne room. The deficiency is knowing that you are a son of God. Not in God. You're blessed. You're empowered. Those things are done. Hallelujah. 
Got to quit waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Know who you are. The government of heaven is already saying, hey, it's no longer what, what you forbid. You have unlimited access to enforce the rights that govern heaven in this earth. Binding and loosing the authority. Look at Mark, the 16th chapter. 16, 15. And he said unto them, go. He was commissioning them. Look at this. He said unto them, go. And he said, go, because what he was saying is authority. Here's your pre-permission. That's what he's saying. Here's your pre-permission. Now, notice this. In Mark, I want you to get this. You need to listen in closely. In Mark 16, the Holy Spirit had not yet come yet. That was in Acts 1 and 8. Let me tell you something. <laughs> he that believeth on me shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He, he was giving them pre-permission. He was commissioning them by authority. You can heal by authority or you can heal by authority and power. Authority and power is better. But John G. Lake, many moons before he ever got baptized with the Holy Ghost, healed more people than most Christians that walk the earth today by authority. It's in his books. It's in his memoirs. He, proven, written down. I, myself, before, before, you listen to me closely, thus saith the gospel of Barrett, of Jesus Christ, I was born again, not spirit-filled yet, and I laid hands on a, a, a person with a migraine headache, uh, a family member with acid reflux, whom were both totally healed. Because I did it, I believed the word, I believed who I was, I stepped out in authority. Now, Acts 1 and 8, you will receive miraculous ability. Now, that's even better, though. But don't disqualify yourself, hallelujah, because here's the commissioning. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe and not shall be damned. Next verse. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Huh? They'll speak with new tongues. Next verse. They'll take up serpents if they drink anything deadly. It shall not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick. Notice the commissioning was just lay hands. You don't have to say all that religious stuff you've been taught. Matter of fact, if you're going to say something, find the words Jesus used when he healed people, be whole, and just say what he said. Don't go say all this stuff because you're just going to start, it's going to be you and not him. That's what happens. We go out to minister and, and we start identifying with us because the enemy's coming to remind you of who you were and you need to say, <laughs> devil, that's a dead man. I don't know who you're talking to. And you need to ignore him and you go out and manifest as a son of God. Lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover, and they shall recover. This was the, the great commission. Commission, now you understand commission, is authority. And the name that's on your badge is the name above every name that you're saying stop in the name that you got to bow to. And the cool thing is, when I'm going to submit the enemy, I'm not going in my authority, I'm going in his. And man, I can put all my faith in God. See, we got to quit putting our faith in us. And we got to put all our faith in God. You get in this church, and you can move, and you can do some amazing things whenever you got confidence. And my faith is in that what God said he would do, it's done. What God does, he does all the way through. He's not a half-make-it God. He's not a barely-do-it God. He's an amazing God. He finishes what he starts. He's finished in, in the spirit. He's finished everything that I need, and I need to, what's in me, who I am in the spirit, I need to get that to my soul so I can manifest as a son of God on the earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. If you have any type of need, any need, we're just going to do it this way today. If you have a pain in your body.